Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you from TSAC, the Super Final. This is in round 12, Lila was playing white against Stockfish. So the time control is 90 minutes with a 5 second increment. So the opening book given, E4, from Lila playing white, we have the French defense, which is still uh, used sometimes by Super Grandmasters. We have d4, d5, knight c3, bishop b4, the winner of variation. We have e5, and now b6. This is the end of the book given. Now, uh, Leela to play here decides on h4. This is an interesting move. And black volunteers bishop f8. Sometimes uh, white will be playing queen g4, annoying the g7 pawn. So this bishop retreat is very interesting because black strategically wants to get rid of the bad bishop uh, with this strategic exchange. Sometimes doing this though weakens the light squares. It makes black's position less solid on light squares sometimes. In particular that you can see this bishop is exerting a prophylactic influence on f5. If f4, f5 you can see that the bishop at the moment where it is, is adding solidity so that's to be borne in mind when swapping off the light square bishop. As a general rule, the slightly you know, loosening, the slight loosening of the light squares. Um, here uh, we have uh, knight f3, c5. Now knight e2, and now bishop a6 here, c3, knight e7, h5, h6. Uh, if knight f5, perhaps white can claim an advantage here after g4, g5, and then knight g3. This threatens, uh, for example, bishop takes, knight takes, queen a4 check, picking up the, uh, the, the uh, piece. And if bishop takes, king takes. This is a dynamic, more dynamic for white. Uh, white has a small edge here. So it seems black might be required to play um, h6. We have knight f4, so now the threat is bishop takes, as mentioned, knight takes, queen a4 check, picking out a piece. We have bishop takes f1, king takes f1, knight bc6, bishop d2, a5, rook h3. This seems a very interesting way of developing here, and logical and justified, though. Knight f5, the knight's kicked, knight f e7, king g2, queen c7. Bishop e3, knight d8, rook b1, knight e c6, rook g3. So in general, white enjoys a space advantage and looking forward perhaps one day to a strategic pawn break. This looks well in the distance at the moment. Such a strategic pawn break would weaken g6 and e6 and maybe then there's entry points on f7 and f f8 which can be used by knights later very long-term strategic plan exists in this position uh, we have queen b7 rook h3 a4 knight d3 and this plot prompts stockfish into what seems to be a very very committal move kind of releasing the tension this sort of move was played a lot uh, by computers as as way back in, you know in the 1980s if you played the london system with white computers with black would often play c4 and you drop your bishop back and have a free hand on the king side we surely don't have such a pattern in this game in this modern age but it does seem like a tension release move and such moves yes they do tend to give a free hand to the opponent if there isn't sufficient counterplay generated we have knight f4. If the alternative to this quite committal move, just for a moment though, if c takes, it seems white stands very well after knight takes, uh, knight takes, c takes. This this looks like a very nice position for white. I think one of the problems is uh, potentially there isn't just the f5 pawn break that maybe this rook can even be helpful on the c file later. White stands uh, significantly better here. So it seems this is a kind of it seems, at least to, from a stockfish perspective, a less evil decision. Knight f4, we have b5, a3, and although this concedes the b3 square, you can imagine even if a knight comes to b3, it's mostly harmless there, its influence. Uh, we have now queen d7, queen c2, knight b7, king h2, bishop e7, knight g2. Uh, we have Black casting queenside, knight f h4. You can see 
that the F pawn is now ready for a strategic pawn break. F4, F5. Uh, Rook H, F8, F3. Leela taking her time. F6, F4. And now Rook D, E8. If F takes E5, then this position, yeah, black's opening up the file for white. White can still entrench a knight on G6, and it's white's that that's really going to enjoy the perks of this F file later. And there's the perk of G5 as well later. White's standing very well. And if black had instead also played F5 as an option, then taking and then this bishop F2 means the F5 point is actually quite vulnerable here, given the pawn here is stopping G6. White can arrange knight e3 with strong pressure on f5. f5 would drop, and that would be a massive advantage for white. So uh, we have rook d e8, knight g6. The rook moves, king g1, and black does open up the file. We have f takes, bishop d8, uh, rook f1, rook takes, king takes, check, queen f2. So is it such a big deal here? Well, rook f3, black really is devoid of counterplay, you could say. It is basically a free hand position. Uh, so bishop e7, we have uh, king g1 and some high level shuffling now. You might wonder, uh, a temporary invasion on f7, testing the waters. It's as if Leela is conducting some internal experiments of no great significance here in this high level shuffling, maybe trying to reach a more optimal configuration. Bishop g5 is played here. If knight c6, then maybe bishop h4 progresses white's cause. And for example, this position, uh, white still stands in a very dominating way. Still a lot to play eventually, though, to win that. So anyway, we have bishop g5. The bishops do come off now. So knight c6, rook f4, rook a8. Some more high level shuffling. And there's no real immediate concrete threats, it seems, except this amazing king march here to support g5. This seems to be uh, taking away black's control of g5 if this pawn can be removed. So that could be a little bit of a configurational upgrade uh, it, once g5 is, is played. And the king is quite safe to do this because these knights are really constricted, they can't really help the queen if the king's coming up to support g5. Uh, we have knight e3, the queen goes to g8, now g5. Yes, it's funny, but the, the outcome is uh, if black doesn't play this, there's a big target on h6. So for example, knight c6, there's a huge target now. And in fact, this exchange sack is super powerful, uh, especially because h6 is going to drop as well. So the exchange sack is absolutely crushing. Uh, two connected pass pawns easily winning there, for example. So uh, black does best to take off that. Uh, so black is no longer controlling g5 of a pawn. Uh, so now, how is progress made, though? So we see some uh, some high-level shuffling again. And no, I will not speak the moves here. <laughs> I will save my voice. For, for when something interesting turns up. Uh, so it's high level shuffling. And um, I guess, yeah, some little experiments have been conducted for configuration behind the scenes and stuff. If, if a more optimal configuration can be achieved. Here though, Rook F2, uh, it seems Stockfish self explodes uh, with impatience here. The Knights, it's, it, are remarkably po poised for either f7 or f8 here. And in fact, both infiltration possibilities uh, are interesting for white. Stockfish here at move 87 plays b4. Uh, let's have a look before this committal move if, say, king b7. Uh, queen f4 gives options of both knight f7 and knight f8. Uh, the thing with knight f7, it can entrench knight to d6. Black is weak on those dark squares after that dark square bishop exchange. Uh, so we have all the classic, you know, pawns on light squares. The adjacent dark square weaknesses are vulnerable. And d6 is the key central dark square square to head for. That would seem the main intent here. So as an example, king b6, knight f7, getting into that d6. 
uh, otherwise it's a horrible problem with uh, g7 and this passed pawn if, if taking uh, so say the knight gets to d6 then you might ask well what's the uh, the method here well it's it's just generally unpleasant for black and losing material eventually with e6 dropping as an example so once a knight entrenches on d6 it does spell uh, big problems for black uh, here if king b8 you know knight f7 as well okay so yeah committal decision losing a pawn stopping the 50 move rule c takes as well is played a takes also was strong even with a3 this bit of activity b5 and uh, knight f4 and knight g takes e6 white's better there as well uh, but um c takes gives the nice perk of the c3 square for a knight which would attack a4 a4 is now looser uh we have rook c7 rook f3 stopping c3 possibilities the knight comes back reroutes to c3 pretty cozy there king b8 rook f2 knight d7 queen h4 knight b6 queen g4 queen d7 rook f8 infiltration again and a pair of rooks come off so here okay this is a long way to win isn't it or is it b5 this does mean now this was there's a, a, a possibility for the king marching to b4 later to play either to take help take a4 or just march in on the dark square so there is a king march available now after b5 queen f8 queen g4 in principle so the king goes to over here that's a temporary pin there knight h4 okay and the king goes over here and in fact now goes to a2 <laughs> king c7 so spending some time over here on a2 uh in this position by the way if queen takes h4 now uh was played queen takes g7 and this is fine White's just going to keep control of c2 here and push the pawn forward. Uh, so without any controversy, that's winning for White. Uh, so we have king c7, queen g3, king b8, and some more high-level shuffling. Uh, so okay, bit of probing. Leader running some experiments. Now, queen exchange here all of a sudden. So yes, this is getting a little bit torturous for black. And yeah, the sides, well, it's it's also hitting the pawn. <laughs> That's the important point. This, this check is actually encouraging. <coughs> Pardon me, queen e7. Because if king d7, queen takes g7 check. So the queens come off. Queen takes, king takes. And now some more high level shuffling. But now the intent is clear that if this king can get to b4, it's going to be good. Uh, black sometimes tries to uh, cause some trouble over this. And uh, yeah, some more shuffling. And the king goes over here for a moment, maybe testing the waters over there, and then actually retreats, comes back. So black is, I think Stockfish is getting bored with this game, and plays g6. If king g8, then king can just march on to b4, as mentioned. That's winning anyway. So g6, uh, there's nothing much for black to do here. That's taken. And then the king does try and come to b4, but it's stopped at the moment. So this knight has to be removed before the king can come to b4. So we see some... Uh, now the king is coming to b4, and it's kind of much clearer now, White's plan. So now there's two connected past pawns. It's all over by the shouting. So uh, let's have a look though. So white two pawns up and uh, black hasn't really got anything to do here. Three pawns up and pawns are just being pushed carefully. King comes in and uh, it's pretty much all over here. Doesn't matter about losing a pawn there that's still winning. Uh, black didn't take that even so white just gave that up it's table base win I imagine here yeah. it's the pawns are 
being pushed and it's it's just a technical win uh it's overwhelming okay so um this game shows um you know some of the strengths of leader compared to uh the ab engines i believe uh so the French defense has traditionally always been a strong point of Leela. It seems uh, Leela understands the pawn breaks and the pawn chain strategies very, very well. As if Leela had bought a copy of John Watson's Play the French and understands all that stuff as well as Nimswich, my system. That's the beautiful thing about neural networks in my view. They are the master of the pawn chains and slow positional maneuvering games like this, where it seems the traditional engine still suffer from issues which uh, were evidenced in the 1980s, these, these tension-reducing re moves, uh, which give the opponent a free hand, uh, condemn engines to uh, a huge, uh, long passivity with no counterplay. Uh, and it reminds me of one season, I had a disastrous season with the French defence with such games, with minimal counterplay, and the next season I switched to the Sicilian defence uh, on the advice of my good friend Paul Georgiou, who felt it was more tactical, and he was right. So I got more tactical games and much better results the season after. I think the French defence is really an acquired taste, and you really need to know what you're doing strategically. Uh, so that's very, very interesting, contrasting the engines here and in how they win, which openings statistically they win, showing the pawn structures and how the games are more strategic or tactical. So uh, interesting game there hope you got something from it if you want to invite me for a game uh, check out kingscrusher.tv if you register at kingscrusher.tv at chess world basically I'll be able to invite you for a game shortly after or you might want to use bit.ly slash chess world there's also a fun kingscrusher tv slash discord chat room uh, which is getting pretty lively uh, recently with the TSEC especially okay and there's the playlist there bit.ly slash Leela chess and Bitly Magnus Colson Chess to check out if you've got time at the moment. Uh, all right, comments, questions, likes, sh um, shares, um, appreciated. Thanks very much.